Minnesota, Rachel Banham buried Northwestern with a 32-point performance. Today, it's the rematch as the Wildcats look to defend their home court. A women's hoops shootout is next on BTN. A Super Sunday in Evanston, Illinois, where they're thinking pink and they're also thinking points. Both of these teams can put up some points if they want to. At Welsh Ryan Arena, this game could play a factor in some postseason conference turning positioning. It's Minnesota and Northwestern women's basketball on BTN. Your Buffalo Wild Wings starting lineup. Northwestern's big four in Min Lion, Deary Coffee. They play 70% of the time, score 84% of the points. They get the start again. And Bantam and Wagner, the highest scoring duo in the country right now, averaging 43 and a half points per game. Alongside the Indiana Fever head coach, Steph White, I'm Lisa Bynton. And Steph Bantam, as good as a career she's having, she is having her best scoring year here today. She absolutely is. Coming off of injury last year, she's really taken that opportunity to raise her game. And what she's done, 10 straight 20-point games, has just been incredible. And Marlene Selling said, we've really seen a difference the last four ball games in Rachel Bantam. And for the Wildcats, it's all about Nia Coffey, the only player in the Big Ten that averages a double-double. She had 27 in the last matchup against Minnesota. Let's see if she can replicate that tonight. And she's a Minneapolis, Minnesota native playing against the Gophers. Obviously, her dad was a former Gopher for the basketball team. She averages 20 points per game in this series against Minnesota. You see the Gophers wearing their road grays and Northwestern sporting their pink unis. Rachel Bannon, that's what she's been able to do. Fifth in the country right now, and she put up 32, got six three-point makes in that game against Northwestern. She had 10 threes in a game against Illinois earlier in the season. That's a Big Ten record. Minnesota comes in with a 15 and seven overall record. They're seven and four in conference play and Northwestern needs to hustle a little bit. They're three and eight, trying to avoid being one of the bottom four teams and playing on that first day of the conference tournament on Wednesday. And Minnesota still has a chance to finish in the top four. They are tied with three teams, Nebraska, Purdue, and the Gophers, all with a seven and four records, all with a chance to finish in the top four. And they get the double bye playing on Friday instead of Wednesday or Thursday. It's so important in an 18 game conference schedule to win the games that you're supposed to win. And obviously there are times where Northwestern hasn't been able to do that. Minnesota has been able to take advantage, winning five of their last six. Tip into the hands of Palace Kunai Akpana. She is getting her ninth straight start for Northwestern. Well, both teams are going to play a lot of zone. Minnesota likes to play a matchup zone. It's important for them to be able to watch away from the basketball as well as Northwestern. What Northwestern turns it over. Ryan had the right idea. You know, she had six turnovers in the win against Illinois. Turnovers have been a plague Lion and they've plagued Deary here in conference play for Northwestern. Battle for the loose ball into Coffee's hands. Coffee is one on three, and she kicks it out to Lyon. That's Maggie Lyon's spot. And that's a good read by Coffee. Seeing Lyon coming down the lane, understanding to get her the ball in a position to be successful. It just didn't go in. It's Bailey bringing it up from the left side. Minnesota can put up some threes. They average just under nine makes per game. And Michaela Bailey has been struggling shooting the game. One of 13. In the last three games. Nia Coffey bodies up and she goes in for two. I think it's really good when Northwestern can get Nia Coffey the ball in a position to score in the paint early in the ball game. Give her some confidence, let her go to work. Traveling violation. So the first turnover for Minnesota. Marlene Stallings in her second season. What a great year that she had in her first year at Minnesota. Led them to the best 18-game start last season. Got them to the NCAA tournament. They're sitting nice 
with a chance to do that again at 15 and 7 record, and as I mentioned, even a chance to finish in the top four in the conference. Got to find a way to attack the zone. You can't afford to pass it around the perimeter as Inman knocks down a mid-range jump shot. Inman's first two. Inman has been absolutely consistent for Northwestern here in conference play. Won the first matchup. Both of these teams knocking down a lot of long-range shots. Each of them hit 11 threes. When you play against the zone, you can't be content with just taking three-point shots. Deer, you can't get the runner to fall. Bantam, you can't give her that space. No, All she space. needs is that little daylight. That's way too much space. And if you watch, Rachel Bantam loves to pick it up out of that right hand dribble. So you really want to crowd that right hand. You force her to attack off the bounce. You have a Bailey three and you have a Bantam three. And suddenly Minnesota is a perfect two for two from back there. Lyon has added that to her repertoire. It's her first two. Bailey looking for some help. The kick out is looking for Wagner. Wagner has yet to take a shot. Nine on the shot clock. Wagner pulls up, up and over Inman. Callis Kunayakana, that's what she can do. She battles on the boards. Well, it's one of the reasons she was inserted into the starting lineup in conference play, because she can get them extra possessions because she's relentless on the board, and you get extra possessions. Maggie Lyon takes advantage. Yeah, she's got a couple of two-pointers back-to-back now for Northwestern. Terry with the take. She absolutely stripped Rachel Banner, goes in for two, and she's going to get a chance at the line. That's what Ashley Deary does. We saw her be recognized before the game for her career leading in steals, and she leads the nation for a reason. Gets a hand in there, able to deflect it, and then finish in transition. Make it 273 career steals after that one. Last time these teams matched up, Ashley Deary really pestered Rachel Bannum. Bannum had 32, but she also had six turnovers. And Bama was shooting three-pointers from, like, the mid-court logo. And Joe McEwen said a shoot-around today. He's really going to try to put pressure on her, either for Deary or for Inman. Try to not give Bama any sort of space, and they create. It was tip. So the Gophers will take it out from the baseline. Joe McEwen in his eighth season, hoping that they can have a February like they had last year. Panum from the corner rings it up. And she had Lyon in her face. And one of the things with that matchup is Rachel Bantam has the size advantage, so she's going to be able to shoot over the top of the defender. So she has to make sure, you have to make sure that you are up on her, almost touching her to make her put it on the floor. Chain the lady into the game, an offensive foul. She pushed off, and Lyon drew it. Chain the lady's been coming off the bench. She's been playing really well coming off the bench since January 3rd in the Penn State game. They got whistled for the offensive foul there. Northwestern with the one-point advantage. Cats are shooting 50% from the floor. Five of 10 so far. Lyon has hit her last two shots. Here's Inman with the take. And that's exactly what you have to do against the zone. You got to find a way to attack it. Penetrate or penetrating passes. Northwestern moves without the ball extremely well. They have players that are capable of scoring off the bounce, and so is Wagner. Wagner, her first two. Carly Wagner averages 19. Legendary. Minnesota high school career. Always wanted to be a gopher. Coffee from distance. Oh, that's unacceptable right there. Maggie Lyon is back. 
There is absolutely no way that you can't protect the rim. Wagner does just a great job of turning it on and getting to the lane. And she finishes off the transition. She's got four. One of the things Marlene Stallings talked about is they needed to get their transition game going. They wanted to be able to push and score before the defense got set. Second chance opportunities again for the Wildcats. Offensive rebound putbacks are critical. Wagner slipped up. Whistle for the travel. Carly Wagner in transition just turns on the Jets. She was able to get an easy layup. Turned it over right there. Northwestern had lost five straight, and so they needed to win bad. They got to win bad against Illinois. Their rival 69 to 59. Snapped that five game losing skid. They got a couple of 20 point scorers in that game as well. Mia Coffey was one. Kristen Inman was another. It's a part of our Reese's perfect combination. They were awfully effective against the Illini. They sure were, and they crushed them on the boards, 51 to 39, including 18 offensive boards as well. Didn't shoot it from the three, but we're under that mark. Joe McEwen said, told us that er earlier in the conference season, like if we're about 20 to 24 threes, that's pretty good for us. Above that hurts us, and they were right at 19. And they're at their best when they do that right there, when they find ways to get easy looks with their player movement and their ball movement. Nia Coffey now with four points. They did not shoot the three very well against Illinois. They were just two of 19. It's been a pattern with some of their losses in conference play this year. Points in the paint, Northwestern's way, a 10-4 advantage. Offensive rebounds, also Northwestern leading 3-0. Oh, get it back. Oh, had her. Missed Bantam, had it right back to her. Anytime you're in that handoff action, the defense has to make a choice who they're going to guard. That's a great drive and dump by Wagner. Jesse Edwards, one of the new players this year from Minnesota, finishes it off. You, you look at this Minnesota team and you think about what they lost and, and really a surprising loss to a man with Amanda Zowie B deciding to turn pro really left a void in the middle and, and they've had to fill that with a lot of new players. And, you know, what, one of the things is when your offense is really designed from the inside out with a player like Zowie B, now it's much more perimeter oriented. Certainly they have the capable scores on the perimeter. But finding that groove, finding the ability to be able to be balanced in the terms of the ways that you score. Great How look. about that? Wagner going for a little alley-oop action to Rachel Banna. Minnesota's retaken the lead, a one-point advantage. Wagner and Banham have been absolutely special this year. Not only just their scoring, but their chemistry their ability to find one another, their ability to have the offense throw flow through the both of them. Well, they're both very good scorers, and Rachel Bantam is, is one of the best in, in f terms of facilitating as well. She's a high IQ player. She understands how to get her teammates the ball in positions to be successful as well, and that's one of the reasons that there's great synergy between her and Wagner. And a lot of times when, when you're when you had an injury like Rachel Bantam had with her ACL last year, it gives you an opportunity to sit on the sidelines and really watch from a coach's point of view. And I think that Rachel Bantam was fortunate enough to be able to learn a lot last season by watching and observing. She had to get goals to each of her teammates to try to accomplish something per game. But she said she really didn't feel comfortable coming back until really the Rutgers game at the beginning of January, the beginning of conference season. Maggie Lyon has been lights out from that distance. And it takes time. I mean, it usually it takes a full year before you do feel natural again, the rhythm of the game, the explosiveness, the ability to elevate like that. And again, that's a matchup that they Minnesota wants to continue to exploit because of Bantam's ability to score over the top of Deary. And she's so comfortable at creating her own shot, runs the point for Minnesota. She's got 11. First player right now in double figures. Well, Rachel Bantam, you know you got to be up on her because of her ability to shoot the three. And I think she almost looks more comfortable off the bounce this year, using her size to elevate over Deary. We're playing at the next level. She's going to have to play point or two. Well, or I, both. Think, I think both. I think she can combo. I think it depends on which system that you get into, which team you go to. Certainly. 
more comfortable at the at the wing position to start her career, but eventually developing in to be able to play. Of course, we're seeing so much now is positionless basketball. Everybody being able to handle the basketball, initiate offense. So it's always important as a young player to learn how to dribble, pass, and shoot. You want him to do everything. I'm greedy, that's right? Not, that's not fair. Well, Wagner's got six. Started out this game a little bit slow. She's got a couple of quick buckets here for Minnesota, taking a 22 to 18 lead. That's not the shot. That's not the shot for Kunai Yakpana to be taking a free throw line jumper. The tip from Lyon creates a turnover into the hands of Ashley Deary. Look out, the bounce pass to Inman for the finish. Northwestern leads the league in steals. I think they have to be much more active in their defense, whether it be man-to-man -man or zone defense, the activity level on the ball creates some turnovers for some scores. They get a team just about 11 times per game. Wagner was trying to post up Deary on the block. Instead, she takes her off the bounce, and Deary created that. You saw the matchup change. Deary goes to Wagner. Kristen Inman goes to Rachel Bannum. Deary thought about it. Instead, she kicks it out to line. 22 seconds to go in the quarter. Download a star. Elena Star can't put it away. Northwestern can hold it for one final shot of the quarter. Deary all the way. No one was even close. That's a great decision by Ashley Deary. Love it in the high pick and roll. The ability to attack and finish under control. Ties it at 22. Northwestern so good on transition. Ashley Deary leading it. That's who you want it. Inman finishing it. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Social distancing helps you avoid contact with those who may be infected with the virus. What can you do? Steer clear of crowds of 10 or more people. Keep a distance of six feet between you and others in public spaces. And if possible, work from home. Wash your hands, avoid big groups, stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. That's true. Mm -hmm. And that voice. Look at that, who's that? Oh, that's awesome. Go Wildcats, how about that little drawing? We're here in Evanston and we're locked up 22-22 between Minnesota and Northwestern. It's a super Sunday with Steph White, I'm Lisa Bynes, and I'd like to say I think you're pretty super. Wh which well. minion was that, do you know? <laughs> I don't know, oh. I don't know I the name. You're the one with the kids. No, I think it was Stewart. I don't know the name of the minions. Speaking of super Sunday, Northwestern yeah. is incredibly super at turning over teams and they've done it again here today. Yeah, they've been really good. Five turnovers they forced for Minnesota and scored on every one. 10 points off of turnovers, nearly half of their points. Minnesota has to do a better job of taking care of the, ba about the basketball and giving them an opportunity. Rachel Bannum has done her job. 11 of Minnesota's 22 in the first quarter, and she's going to work again. Minnesota will keep it for a shot clock. You have to be aware of where Wagner is right now, and don't lose the inbounder. Kunai Akpana challenged Wagner. She's going to get whistled for the foul. That is her first. Minnesota's a team that leads the league in three-point field goals, but I love how aggressive Wagner has been to the rim early. Yeah, they put up over 570 three-point attempts this year, but their shooting efficiency, only eighth in conference play. Yeah, I think it's one, one thing for your identity to be a three-point shooting team, but you certainly have to find a way to be a little bit more balanced. And I think it's how you get your three-point shots. Are they off of driving kicks? Are they off of inside out? Or are they off of one pass offense? Minnesota, as you mentioned, hanging in that zone. They're going to challenge Northwestern to shoot from distance. 
I don't, let's get it back. I don't know how long it's been since Coffee's gotten a touch, but we haven't called her name in a while. Northwestern has to understand that she needs to get a touch every time down the floor. We've done enough Northwestern games to know that that is a pattern for the Cats. There is a touch for Coffee leading the break. It's one on three. Coffee doesn't care. Coffee's going to take it herself. I love it when she finds that next gear, the explosiveness. She hit it about that three point line in two strides. She's at the rim. And I think that's one of the areas that she's gotten better. It used to be one speed. She's learning a change of speed, change of pace. Six points now for Nia Coffey, the Minneapolis native. Bantam hardly ever misses badly on a shot. I don't know that I've ever seen her miss badly on a shot. That's the sign of somebody who's put in a lot of work, gotten a lot of reps in the gym. Yeah, I think I counted maybe three misses all of shoot around this morning. Hankins is in, Jordan Hankins is in for Northwestern for the first time, and Bailey gets another free look. First quarter, she knocked that down, can't get that one to fall. Lyon has come up empty-handed from that spot today. And Wagner on the take, they're gonna get Inman for the foul and an and one opportunity for Wagner. That's twice that Carly Wagner has beaten everybody down the floor. Northwestern's transition defense has not been very good, and Rachel Bantam has her head up, finds Wagner. I'm not sure about that foul call, though. I don't think Kristen Inman was <laughs> sure of that foul call either. It looked like a little bit of space in between there. But your point is well taken. She beat Maggie Lyon one time down the floor, and foul or not, she did beat Kristen Inman down the floor on that possession as well. Makes good on the free throw. Wagner now has scored double figures in every single game this year. She's at 10. Right now, very stagnant on the offensive end, using the on-ball screen. That's a great pass inside by Hankins. Kunai Akpana creating the jump ball opportunity. Northwestern will get it out from underneath. One of the things against the zone, you have to get that zone to shift, and, and you got to find different ways to attack, and that's a really good seal on the backside, and I think that Northwestern can take a lot more advantage of Wagner on the back line with Coffee and find different ways to get her a touch. Deary with the quick shot. Kunai Akpana again keeps it alive. Lyon can't put it away. Maggie Lyon hit three straight buckets for Northwestern, but has gotten a little bit cold as of late. Lyon hits three straight inside the three. She's only shooting at 32% from the three-point line in conference play, so maybe you have to find a way to get into that mid-range and get your stroke back. Here is Lyon. One of seven from three in that Illinois game. And Coffey gets pushed from behind on the block. That's Alina Starr, her first personal. Lydia Rohde in for the first time for Northwestern. The Cats are 0 for 7, Steph White, from three today. Coming off a game, as I mentioned, two of 19 against Illinois. Here's Coffey with the great step through move. She can really get through the tiniest of spaces, the way that she's able to move and attack. That's what Northwestern has to do. You cannot lose Rachel Bantam. One of the things that Joe McEwen talked about, awareness on the defensive end. We have to be aware of where the opponent's star player is. And right there, no awareness. Rachel Bantam makes them pay. She's got three of them now. She's three of five from back there. Remember, she put up six the last time these two teams met. Deary from three. So Deary with the answer ties it back at 29. Bantam to star, and that was Deary with the quick hands to create that. And Inman's going to get called for the offensive foul. Jesse Edwards was there. She was there and she sold it. I mean, it was a great job of being in position, a great job of taking the contact. It's Northwestern's third team foul of the quarter. Remember, they get to five, and Minnesota will be shooting two free throws. And I 
think that's the second on Inman. So now Deary and Inman both have two. And this is a Northwestern team that is not very deep. Wagner was looking for Hedstrom. Minnesota will keep it on the sideline. Behind the back, Banner. And battling for the board, they're going to get Carly Barnes with a foul. Northwestern needs to find a way to get a, get a score, an easy score. If you watch the way that Minnesota is playing this zone defense, they're covering that high pick and roll ball screen. So moving without the basketball, attacking some of the corners as well, getting the defense to shift. I like that cut. Good. That's how you get it overload, make a cut, get the extra pass. That's a good shot. That's a good rebound from Inman, too. Kunaya Kana again keeping another possession alive. The bullet. She had that one. Holy cow. Six offensive rebounds for Northwestern already this afternoon. Six to shoot. Lion with it up top. Lion with the pull up. And they're going to get Kunai Akpano up and over the back. Back and forth we go. An even competitive game. Tied 29 all. Tomorrow on BTN, women's basketball returns as Purdue heads to Madison to take on Wisconsin. Coverage starts tomorrow at 7 Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. In fact, Monday is a really big women's basketball night. Ohio State and Maryland also playing. Today, though, this afternoon here in Evanston, we get to watch one of the best scorers in the country play. And Minnesota's Rachel Bannum. She's leading all scorers right now with 14. In fact, Carly Wagner and Rachel Bannum combined for 9 of 17 shooting for 24 points. The rest of Minnesota, 2 of 7 for 5 points. That's Mulaney with the take. Those are her first two. Good strong move by Shane Mullaney. Had 17 points in the last game against Rutgers. Has really been an offensive punch for Minnesota off the bench. And that's what it takes. You know when you've got two premier scorers in the country, you have to have somebody consistently as a third scorer. Mullaney's been there. Maggie Lyon has been a two-point shooter today. She's got eight. She's been a better two-point shooter than three-point shooter. Mulaney looking to take Deary off the bounce, and she does. Can't put it away. Kunai Akpana battling for it. I just love her energy and effort. She just won't be denied. Out to Coffee. She has not found success from that spot today. Mia Coffee 0 for 2 from 3. Well, I think anytime you're playing Northwestern, you'd certainly rather take your chances with Coffey shooting the three than getting the ball inside. And that time she had time and space. It's a good shot within the flow of the offense. But I still think that they have to continue to look for Coffey inside or look for her opportunities to attack the seams of the zone. That's good ball movement. Deary left all alone, so she'll take it. Why not? If you got results like that. Absolutely. And I think Starr played it right. She didn't want to allow the short corner pass to Coffey. Challenged Deary to consistently make down, knock down shots. Well, she's answered that challenge. She is two of three from back there. Mullaney can't knock it down. Deary now in double figures with 10, and she's leading the break. Maggie Lyon gets inside that mid-range. Again, I like the decision. She might have had the three in transition, but decided to get into the paint, knock down the high percentage shot. Northwestern's largest lead of the game now at five. Deary tracks it down. Yeah. 
Minnesota gets back, and Deary coughs it up. Maybe trying to do a little bit too much. Here's Wagner, who loses it. And Carly Wagner called for the foul. Wagner lost the ball on that possession, got a little frustrated. And she tried to get it right back. Mm hmm sure did. Thirty-six to thirty-one, Northwestern leading Minnesota. Coming up at the half in about two and a half minutes of game time. Feature on Rachel Bannum, Dave Revson in the studio. Look at her plans after basketball. Even dive into a little bit about her family background. What a staple she has been for Minnesota basketball. Part of the one of the top scoring leaders in the country. In fact, the Big Ten has two of the top five in the country. I don't think Rachel Vanham is going to have to think about life after basketball for a while. I think she's going to be able to have a long career, but you certainly look at what she's been able to do today. you got to get up on her. You can't give her space here. She uses her size to score over Deary. Lying in her face, it doesn't matter. You know, one of the things I think it looks a little bit different in Rachel Bantam's shot compared to what it was prior to her injury, and you can tell she's been getting a lot of reps, is she's re her release point's a little bit higher. A little bit higher, she's got a little bit more lift on it. And, and Lisa, to me, she's playing much more aggressively and much better off the bounce than I would have anticipated coming off of an ACL. Yeah, and I feel like she actually looks the fittest that she has looked in her career. Minnesota all-time leading scorer, the career three-point shooter for the Gophers. She's already passed 2,700 career points. She just passed Katie Smith. She's now chasing Jantel Lavender, moving up the scoring Big Ten ranks. Lydia Rohde. If Northwestern can get that out of Lydia Rohde, they're in pretty good shape. Well, when you're playing against a team that plays zone, you certainly want to put three-point shooters out on the floor, and Lydia Rohde is that for Northwestern. Part of a 10-2 Wildcat run. Lydia Rohde has made one three-point make in the last seven games since she exploded in Lydia Rohde in terms against Penn State. And Rohde commits her first foul. And this is one of the things that Joe McEwen talked about. He, he doesn't go very deep into his bench. And in order to fight through some of the fatigue that maybe you see in, in, as a reason in the fourth quarter that sometimes his team doesn't make as good of decisions because of fatigue. He's got to use his bench earlier. We saw Hankins already. We've seen Rhodey as well. And part of that he's forced to because of foul trouble. Hedstrom splits the pair. Joanna Hedstrom coming off the bench for Minnesota. Has had three straight double-figure scoring games. Deary for two. Ashley Deary has been shooting pretty well this half. And Ashley Deary needs it. She struggled from the floor in conference play with the exception of that game against Indiana. Northwestern goes as she goes. 12 points, six assists so far. A little easy bucket there for Starr. I like the aggressiveness to the rim, the drive and drops by Minnesota. I mentioned Joanna Hedstrom. Off the bench for Minnesota, our Motel 6, 6 player of the game. 11 points against Rutgers. It's one of three straight double-figure scoring games. She was whistled for the personal. She had 11 points against Illinois, 18 against Michigan, 11 against Rutgers. And Maggie Lyon goes down. Michaela Bailey whistled for the foul. Both these teams with five team fouls. So for the final minute and a half, they'll be shooting a couple of free throws. Got to get up there. That's too much space. You, you cannot afford to think about getting beat off the dribble by Rachel Bannum. If that happens, you have to rely on your help defender. If you give her that much space, she's going to knock it down all day long. It's her fourth three-point make, and she makes it look so easy. She's got 17 here in the half. Lydia Rohde 
lighten up a little bit for the Wildcats. You look at personnel on the scouting report. Rody is a three-point shooter and getting too much space. Look out. Rachel Bantam is feeling it. We've seen Bantam go off in the second half of a lot of ball games this year. She's already going off in the first. And she's got 20. So that streak of 20-point games, that continues here in the first half. 11 straight games with 20 now. Tanaya Akpana gets bumped from behind. I mean, you could see this developing from a mile away. Coffee getting back in transition, but you got to get back and you got to check her. You got to force her to take it off the bounce. And then the next time, again, too much space, and you certainly can't go underneath the screen. She told me today that's her favorite shot. I, well, said, I would be mine too if I shoot it with the I efficiency said, that she shoots yeah, it with. Yeah, I said, what's your sweet spot? And she said, mostly because I have the ball in my hand, I'm handling point. It's at that top, the top of the key. I mean, she's money from there. Again, coming up with the half, you can learn more about Rachel Bannum, a wonderful feature coming up. Dave Repson will take you through it. A wonderful player and a wonderful career. And we're happy in the Big Ten that she decided to come back so we can watch some of this in her fifth year. One second to shoot into the hands of Starr. Did she get it off in time? Doesn't matter. Northwestern with a 46 to 40 halftime advantage, but not after a little bit of a push from Rachel Bannum down the stretch. After the break, we'll send it to Chicago for the halftime report with Dave Revson. So stick around. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From farms to breweries and orchards to markets, discover how the University of Minnesota is cultivating a new crop of Minnesota businesses. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From hooves to hands and paws to possibilities, discover how the University of Minnesota is making medical advances for all Minnesotans. Women's basketball on BTN is brought to you in part by State Farm. We exist to assist. Lots of candy and basketball. Life does not get any better than that. Here at the half, Northwestern leading Minnesota. 46 to 40 with the Indiana Fever head coach Steph White. I'm Lisa Bynes and you didn't get me any candy. I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, we're, we're too old. We don't got to work candy. on that. What you did get me though are your mid-season awards. So what do you got? We got player of the year. We got coach of the year. We got one more thing. What, what else do we have? Freshman I of mean, the year. Maybe it is freshman of the year. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you think about mid-season awards and obviously I think the, the front runners right here, player of the year, Kelsey Mitchell. What she's done is just continue to build upon what she did as a freshman. Jessica Shepard is just having a tremendous year. And Nebraska, a team that after they lost four seniors last year to now be sitting in a position to, to be a full, top four seed in the Big Ten tournament as well. And Coach of the Year, I'm going to go with Brenda Fries. And I'm going to go with Brenda Fries because I feel like if you think about the difference between Maryland and Ohio State in terms of the players that they have, there's no question that they're two of the top teams. The way that Maryland goes about it, maybe a little bit less talent in terms of star power to still be in the position that they're in to, to compete for the Big Ten championship. But I think it's going to be a neck-and-neck -neck battle between her and Kevin McGuff throughout the rest of the season. I was going to say, even though Ohio State beat Maryland head-to-head, -head, Buckeye fans, if you don't agree, you can see Steph White tomorrow in Columbus for that game and tell her in person yourself. <laughs> hey, Northwestern, our first half stats. Northwestern is generating some offense in some interesting ways in this first half. Yeah, and points off with turnovers and second-chance points. You look at that, it's just too easy. 24 points in those two areas in Minnesota. No points off the turnovers. They got to find a way to get some defensive stops. Ashley Deary's done what she's done all year long. That's why she leads the country in steals for an easy transition bucket. When you're a team that can score the basketball on offense, you still have to find ways to get defensive stops. That's been the challenge for Minnesota, and they've hurt themselves in a couple of areas that they can control, but that's what Northwestern has been able to take advantage of. Yeah, Vanham, Wagner, they're the top scoring duo in the country. They're doing it again for Minnesota. 30 of the Gophers, 40 points this half. And they get it right back into the hands of Rachel Banna. Spins goes to work right away. Nice transition. Inman for two. 
And Kristen Inman now in double figures. Northwestern gets it right back. The Cats almost had four players in double figures after that first half. And Palace Kunayakwana had 11 boards in the first half. Nia Coffey with the take. She had talked about Palace Kunayakwana and how good of a rebounder she is even at practice. She said she even surprises her. Takes rebounds away from Nia Coffey during practice. She's like, hey, that's fine. As long as you do that during the game, I'm more than OK with well, that. Well, if you looked at the numbers, really, in terms of, of, of conference stats, Nia Coffey was leading and is leading the conference in rebounds. But before the emergence of Kunai Akana, nobody else was in the top 15 for Northwestern. They weren't allowing themselves multiple possessions. And that's what Kunai Akana gives them. Jesse Edwards whistled for her second. Nia Coffey mentioned a Minneapolis, Minnesota native, considered going to Minnesota, chose Northwestern instead. Her father played for the Gophers, but she said, you know, sometimes when you're a person, you have to try to create your own path, and that's really something that I wanted to do with my college choice. And Nia Coffey, the second McDonald's All-American behind Amy Jeske to come to Northwestern, and really that class of Coffey and Inman and Deary you know, it have been, has been the class that has taken Northwestern to another level. That's why the expectation so high this year for this team and the surprise that they are just three and eight in the Big Ten. And certainly they're the scariest three and eight team that you could come across. Yeah. Because of the potential that they have to be so much better. The best games that they played in the conference, both games that they played against Ohio State, you could argue. Lion with the take gets bumped on the shot. There are certain teams that you just match up really well against. And I think Northwestern and Ohio State match up really well. You know, I, I think that the next step and the challenging thing about Northwestern is, is the mentality piece of it. You know, you're no longer the, the hunter. You're the hunted. And, and to be able to, to change that mindset, you can't have a bad day. you got to win the games that you're supposed to win. And I think that that's something that we've seen with this team is they haven't quite been there from that mental toughness aspect. Snapped a five-game losing skid with a win against Illinois. It's the first game that Northwestern played in February. Remember last year, they were undefeated in the month of February. Went a perfect 8-0. Wagner with the take high off the glass. I love the aggressiveness of Carly Wagner in this ball game. She's been able to get to the rim and score. She's gotten to the rim to find her open teammates. She was inserted into the starting lineup last year when Rachel Blanham blew out her knee. And Bantam, you mentioned in the first half, got to watch her teammates. And Bantam said that she's much more aggressive this year. Felt like she hesitated sometimes on her shots last season. Seven to shoot. Deary can't get the runner to fall. Guess what? Palace Kunai Akpana keeps it alive again. Nice pass. They get it back to Palace Kunai Akpana. Nia Coffey rewards her. And that's, again, you, see, you have seen so much growth in Nia Coffey in, in terms of when to attack and when not to attack. Her body control right there, the ability to find her open teammates. First field goal of the game. And you see, it looks like Northwestern playing that box and one. Inman is face guarding Rachel Bantam, not allowing her to get the ball back if she gets it up. Kunaya Pana has 13 rebounds now. Her career high is 16 against Ohio State. On the transition, Bailey draws a contact on Lyon. Palace Kunaya Kwanis just so active on the offensive glass. Uses her size to get in there, but also understands when and where the shot's coming from out of offense. And then great pass by Nia Coffey. Her ninth straight start, but coming into today, really half of the games that she started, four of the eight, she had double-digit rebounding games. Since she's been inserted into the starting lineup, she has been lights out in that department for Northwestern. And she knows what, that that's her role. And there are very few players in the game who have a knack and a passion for going to get rebounds. Palace Kunai Yakana is one of them. She had 13 and 12 the last time Northwestern took on Minnesota back on January 20th. 52 to 44 advantage for the Cats. They go inside to Nia Coffey. Every time. You can get it to her every time. That back line of Minnesota so small. I mean, they're essentially playing five guards right now. 
When that happens, you get those post-up looks. You get offensive rebound opportunities. And for Minnesota, they have to be extremely disciplined in terms of box out. And there's Bantam able to create. That'll work. She's got 22. The 10-point advantage was the largest lead of the game. Deary hit a couple of those in the first half. Misses everything on that attempt. Looking in and face guarding Bantam. Trying to not allow her to get a touch. I'll be interested to see if Minnesota starts to put the ball in her hands in the backcourt. Again, allow her to create. Because if she comes off of an on-ball screen, she's now taking two defenders in that box, can create an open shot for somebody else. While Inman is face guarding Bantam, Deary created the turnover on Shane Mullaney. It's the 10th turnover for Minnesota. Kunai Akpana, she can rebound, she can score too. I think that's one of those, no, no, yes, <laughs> shots. Again, you know, that's, that's gonna be the development of Kunai Akpana's game, is to continue to work on her range. 14 points off turnovers for Northwestern now. Nia Coffey going hard for the board. Joanna Hedstrom, that is her third. She's only got a point tonight off the bench. In the last few games, she has been provided quite the scoring punch for Minnesota, but she's gonna have to take a seat now in foul trouble with three. Coffee will pull up. I don't think that was a good offensive possession for Northwestern. Didn't get much ball or player movement. And this is what I expect to see Minnesota do. Now put the ball in her hands. Northwestern playing man to man, switched it back up. Great find. Now that's a great extra pass. Inman wants to run with it. Gets it out to Coffee. And how about the takeaway? Nice hands by Michaela Bailey. Good transition defense by Bailey. Wasn't back to stop it initially, but found a way to get a hand on the ball. Both of these teams trying to run on the other. Coffee gets tangled up, and then Coffee's gonna get whistled for the foul. That was that comfort dribble, Lisa. You just she, she cannot had the do shot. that. Mm -hmm. She had the shot. And you can't wrap your arms around a player. That'll be a foul as well. It might be. That is now if we're talking first. about that other game happening a little bit later, then that's really part what of the other game. Is there another game? There might is be. there a big game coming up tonight? Who, who do you got, Lisa? Who's your pick? Hmm. I'm going to go with the sentimental. Peyton Manning might be retiring soon. I'd like to see him get one more championship before he's done. I think Cam Newton could get there again. You? I like the sentimental pick as well. You know, we still love Peyton in Indianapolis. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Off and running, Great. it's Bailey finish. with the scoop and finish. We don't see Bailey take a lot of twos. That was a great finish in traffic. Bailey's got seven. Had 65 three-point makes last year and led the team. It's an eight-point advantage for the home team. Minnesota is off and running. Michaela Bailey going to be the recipient on this. Bailey for two and cuts the lead down to eight. Richard Coffey, the dad of Mia Coffey in the house. Of course, he was a forward at Minnesota in the late 80s. Had a great career in Minneapolis there. Led the Big Ten in rebounding. And in fact, Mia Coffey told me today that because he led the Big Ten in rebounding, one of her goals is to lead the Big Ten in rebounding. Do it like Pops used she, to do it. She's accomplished that goal. She leads the Big Ten in rebounding. And you know, every time we say this, it's a little bit hard for me to believe, but the only Big Ten player to average a double-double. That still surprises me. Jessica Shepard kind of flirts with it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, she does at 9.9. Richard Coffey said the one thing that she could do, that Mia could do a little bit better, is get some more offensive rebounds. Oh, she pursues the offensive glass. He'd like to see more. When I was, when I was watching film of that first game against Minnesota, there was one where she just flew in from the top of the key and snatched it right out of midair. Inman snatching that one. 
Northwestern gets a fresh shot clock. That's the 15th offensive rebound for Northwestern. One of the areas that Minnesota is going to have to continue to get better playing this zone is rebounding out of the zone. Step through move for Coffey. And Edwards made it tough for him. Minnesota, a team that can score the basketball, but Lisa, they're giving up almost 80 points a game or over 80 points a game in conference play as well. You got to be able to find ways to get stops. Third best scoring average, as you said, 80.6, but the worst amount of points that they allow an opponent. Nia Coffey can't put it away. She's going to miss a lot of those bunnies on the left side. Meanwhile, it's Shane Mullaney. Good looking transition for Minnesota. Capitalize on those opportunities when you get them. Miss shots, turn them into easy scores. Lead was 10, it's now six. Deary gets the screen. And another offensive board. Coffee's going to work. She literally just pushed Edwards right out of the way. Yeah, that could have been an offensive foul call right there on Coffee. But Northwestern's again activity level on the offensive glass. And Wagner gets Coffee on the tape. Nia Coffee just goes up and gets that ball. And right there, you see the probably missed offensive foul. Coffee's able to. Get it in for two, but call for the foul on the other end. That's her second. It's the team's third. Wagner's at the line. Minnesota fans, there's a great article about Carly Wagner on gophersports.com. Talks about her background and growing up in a small town, the effect that she had with such a great high school career, with her high school to back-to-back -back state titles her junior and senior years, and the kind of support that she even continues to get at Williams Arena playing in her college career. Maggie Lyon gets it from up top. That's a sweet spot for Maggie Lyon against the zone. It has been all day for Maggie Lyon, and I like that she just planted herself there Got the open look. That middle of the zone in that 3-2 or the 1-2-2, two, two, whatever you want to call it, that free throw line area is open. She's got 14. Meanwhile, Bantam draws the personal. Bantam's doing that Kelsey Mitchell thing for us. She's kind of lulling us to sleep in the third quarter, just getting ready to explode for another outing like in the first half. Well, she's drawn the foul on Kristen Inman, and that is Inman's third. I thought Kelsey Mitchell was a second half, regardless if it was third quarter or fourth quarter kind of player. Yeah, and, and Bantam has been very good in the second half. She had 25 of her 27 against Illinois in the second half, 24 in the second against Michigan. She was very active and aggressive early in the first half of this ball game. 18 of 20 against Wisconsin. Minnesota, 10 of 13 now from the free throw line. Bantam had 20 in the first half. She's got four here in the quarter. She's looking to add more to that, creating the turnover. Lydia Rohde dives for it. Take another look. Love seeing these great hustle plays. Bantam gets in the passing lane, creates a turnover, and Rohde gets on the floor and gets after it. Lydia Rohde had a couple of Big buckets in the first half for Northwestern. Doing some of the stuff that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. The third on Shane Mullaney. Lydia Rohde had a career high 11 points. She hit three threes against Penn State, but that was seven games ago. She has not really been an offensive presence since. She's making some moves today for the Cats. Another rebound for Kunai Akpana. That's 14. Oh, 
The last couple of possessions, Minnesota's really kept Northwestern out beyond that three-point line. And we saw Ashley Deary hit a couple early in the ball game, but you still, if you're going to take your chances, you want Deary to be the one to shoot those threes. You don't want to allow easy inside scores. Board number 15 for Kunai Akpana. I love it. She pursues the tenacity. She wants it. She goes to get it. Northwestern hasn't generated a lot of three-point attempts, just 13 as they throw it away there. And they're four of 13 from three. I mean, haven't had any, you know, the last four or five possessions have not had good offensive possessions. The way Minnesota can shoot the basketball, they don't need a lot of time to get in a ball game. Lion with the take and the finish. Northwestern continuing to produce some points off turnovers. They got 16 today. And Ashley Deary had the turnover on the offensive end of the floor and then creates the turnover on the defensive end of the floor. And the bump from Kunai Akpana. Savannah, keep an eye on that. Look for Northwestern to put Deary in a high pick and roll action right here. Get the last shot of the of the quarter. Or put Inman in it. There you go. Lion from up top. I don't think that's a good possession again for Northwestern. Too much settling for the outside shot. Not enough ball movement. Not enough rotation, but they have been very good on the defensive end of the floor and creating offense in transition. Maggie Lyon, the beneficiary right here of a tremendous defensive play by Ashley Deary. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Good hand washing protects you and can slow the spread of the virus. Use soap and warm water. Be sure to wash both sides between your fingers, fingernails, thumbs, and wrists. Scrub for at least 20 seconds. Wash early and often. Wash your hands, avoid big groups. Stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. More good eats for the little ones here at Well Shrine Arena. The Cats leading 63 to 56. Our State Farm assist of the game. Bantam starts it. Wagner finds Shane Mullaney underneath. One of the few times Minnesota's been able to get the ball in transition in the second half. Shane Mullaney, six points off the bench. Wagner, a couple of assists. 14 points to Bantam's 24. Carly Wagner. Looking at to just two points in that third quarter. I'm looking at this stat sheet, Lisa, my favorite stat that we haven't mentioned yet today for Northwestern, 21 assists on 27 made field goals. How have we not mentioned that at the start of the fourth quarter? I have no idea. Dropping the ball. Completely dropping the ball. It's been, it's been, uh, it's been the obvious action for Northwestern has been the 11 turnovers that they forced into the 18 or into the 16 points off of those turnovers and those 18 second chance points. But they've been very efficient in their field goal shooting because they've been getting the best shot on the floor. Coffee makes good on a couple of free throws. Northwestern with a nine point advantage here in the fourth quarter. One thing Joe McEwen talked about were three games where they felt like they didn't finish down the stretch. The first time these two teams met against Indiana and most recently against Ohio State. And they've got a nine point advantage here as we start the fourth quarter. So in that matchup, they were down against Minnesota and really came back. And I think any time that you expend a lot of energy to come back and you don't have a deep bench, sometimes you don't have enough to finish. 
of Minnesota in that matchup. Had 23 points off of Northwestern turnovers. So really flipped the script here today. 187 combined points scored between those two teams. 95 to 92 final. to the hands of Coffey, who's called for the offensive foul. And that is, I believe, number four on Nia Coffey. She's got to shoot that one. She's got to shoot that one, not put it on the ground. You're five, seven feet away from the bucket. you just got to score it. So Coffey's got to take a seat. Prime opportunity for Minnesota on both ends of the floor with Nia Coffey on the bench in foul trouble. Field goal disparity, Northwestern has put up 64 to Minnesota's 45 shot attempts. And that's because of all the extra possessions, the turnovers by Minnesota, the offensive rebounds by Northwestern. Deary, that's a bad shot. shot. That's a bad shot. Northwestern hasn't had a good offensive possession since about midway through the third quarter. You've got to make sure that you get a high percentage look. You've got to move the ball. You've got to get an easy score. You know, it's one thing to get a shot like that and even like that early in the ball game or if you've been on a rhythm, but when you've had trouble on the offensive end of the floor, you can't get quick shot happy. One of the good things that Northwestern was doing early was attacking that zone. They have not done that much in the second half. And Minnesota, again, has a prime opportunity if they can get some good looks in the half court. And that's a good one, because all she needs is about six inches. My goodness. Rachel Banna taking Lydia Rohde off the bounce. Banna, six three-point makes. She had six against Northwestern the first time. This is a time for Minnesota. You'd like to see a little bit more defensive energy for it from them. They're be able to make a run, maybe get some momentum. Remember, Mia Coffey out of the game for Northwestern, out with four personal fouls. Wagner, again, they like this matchup. Bannum against Lydia Rodis, too far off. Bannum with the hesitation. Bannum with the take. Go back to back for Rachel Bannum. It's a great take by Bannum. We've seen this so many times in the fourth quarter where she just takes over ball games. And in that situation, I think that's good defense by Rhodey. Now there has to be a rotation. You get her to attack the paint. Somebody else has to come bring two, but not on the three-point shot. You give her six inches, she's going to knock it down all day long. Minnesota's mounting a charge. The last two times Rachel Bantam faced Northwestern, 32 has been the magic number. Today, she's actually been pretty magical as well. Not 32 quite yet, but she's at 29 this afternoon. Yeah, plenty of time, plenty of time. Six of 10 from distance, including the last five points for Minnesota. Lyon with the take. And a foul is called. And that's a great call coming out of the break. You, you've settled for a lot of long jump shots in that third quarter and early in the fourth. So now finding a way to attack the rim. Maggie Lyon, one of the few seniors on this team. Trying to get her team back to the postseason. They're going to have to hustle in their remaining schedule that they have left here in the regular season in the February fight. Northwestern with a sub-500 conference record right now. Banna off the class. You know what? When it's your afternoon, shots like that go in. When you get the ball up, and you have great arc and a soft touch, you're always going to have a chance for it to go in. Seven three-point makes now for Rachel Bannum, and she's at that magic number of 32. And, and here's one of the things when you're, when you're young players, as Bannum gets the steal, see if Minnesota can get something in transition. Nice take and finish. Bannum is going to work. They're going to count the foul. It was a little bit of a delayed whistle. 
Rachel Bannum with the and one chance. Bannum in transition, attacks, and that, that was a, a late whistle right there. Ball goes in, but good finish by Bannum. Now, one of the things that, that you have to do as a player is you have to watch the game. You have to watch film. You have to study your opponents. You have to learn their tendencies. And anytime Rachel Bantam starts that little hop, you know she's about to pull it. So you got to really read that and get up in her. 11 to 1 run since Nia Coffey has left this game. Minnesota has retaken this lead. Look, the way that Minnesota can score the basketball, they're always going to give themselves a chance. It becomes about then finding a way to get stops on the defensive end. And they've done a much better job on the defensive end. Northwestern has certainly helped them with their shot selection. But Minnesota taking advantage of those opportunities. Yeah, when you can shoot threes, you can get back into it awfully quickly. Jesse Edwards now with four fouls for Minnesota. And there is Northwestern's player with four. An 11-2 run since Coffee has been sitting out. Well, and it's a tough spot for Joe McEwen to be in right now. You, you certainly want to have Nia Coffee on the floor, but you know that, that you got to be able to finish. You just try to squeeze as much time with her on the bench as you can. Well, they've taken Lydia Rohde off of Rachel Bannum, put Ashley Deary back on her. Bannum was posting up. Wagner will make it or take the shot anyhow. Bannum was trying to post up Ashley Deary on the other block. Eight ties, 11 lead changes in this one. Five and a half to play. Kristen Inman can't get it. Palace Kunai Akpana whistled for the over the back. And that is her third. Joe McEwen apparently didn't agree. Coaches, we never agree to calls, Lisa. Mm. Is you that know how that? it goes? That's how it goes. But right now, you can feel the momentum shift. You can feel Minnesota getting that confidence. You can feel them in their aggressive attack on the offensive end of the floor. So Nia Coffey's back in. After that run, Minnesota made with her out of the game. Cats with a one-point advantage. And Coffey's got to be smart. She's got to be smart. Not try to force anything on the offensive end. Be smart on the defensive end, looking for the isolation with Deary. Hedstrom has been quiet all day until there. The great equalizer, that three-point shot. Everybody has to be aware of Rachel Bantam on the block. Hedstrom knocks it down. Her first field goal of the afternoon gives Minnesota the lead right back. The kick out to Deary. Ashley Deary is a three-point shooter for the Cats And that's tonight. the one, the inside out. Not the first pass in offense, not with no ball reversal, but the attack, the penetrating pass gets inside, then the backside look. She's got 15. She's made three of those from back there. Coffee with the big board. Northwestern wants to run. A one-point advantage. Gets it out to Lyon from up top. Lyon gets it right back. Fresh shot clock for the Cats. Inman from the baseline. Headstrom is short, but trying to keep that alive. Ashley Deary, a wide open opportunity. That was a great effort by Deary to get that loose ball. You get her in the open court, she's able to finish. Great hustle play. 17 now for Northwestern's point guard. And oh, by the way, she's got a D up Rachel Bannum. Here's Wagner looking to take Inman off the bounce and an offensive foul call. 73 to 70. This thing's getting exciting. Three and a half to play. Rachel Bantam, what more can she do? Dave 
thank you. This one has become interesting here in Evanston between Northwestern and Minnesota. The Cats with a three-point advantage, but they did. They were up nine. Mia Coffey went out of the game, and then Steph White, Rachel Bannon went to work. Well, I think there's no question that we knew this was going to be a tight game going to the end. Minnesota, because of the way they can score the basketball, they're always going to give themselves a chance, and Rachel Bannon has been terrific all day long and she hits this one get it up there give it a chance three of her 35. coffee was out about a four minute stretch or so they were up nine and minnesota got back into it even took the lead at one point rachel bantam 35 points and the other star on the other end it's nia coffee for northwestern I think you got to give Coffee a touch every time down the floor, just like Bantam's got to get one, and that is not a smart foul. You've got people in her face. If Rachel Bantam makes difficult shots like that, which she can and she does, you have to live with that, but you certainly don't want to foul a jump shooter. I feel like the stars are going to come out here in the last three minutes and some change. Lisa, I feel like that the stars have been out. They're going to, but they're going to come out some more. Three minutes to go. Bantam has only missed once from the free throw line. Her career high is 39. Got that a couple of times. Last time against Illinois where she put up 10 threes. She's got 37 today. And she walked with it. Can't be in a hurry. Poise and patience down the stretch. And that's one of the things that you see in Rachel Bantam. She's always in complete control. She understands time and score situations. She doesn't usually get rushed. They like to ISO her on that right side. The fifth foul on Jesse Edwards. So she's now done. Two. Edwards with two points and eight rebounds. Down here. And we have a break in the action. You see the top part of your screen, Kristen Inman. Getting 10 to 2 by the athletic training staff. Nia Coffey waiting to shoot her free throws. It's hard being a dad in the stance. Richard Coffey taking this one in, making the trip from Minnesota. And Minnesota turns it over. The 13th turnover today. That he's was a, a gopher by blood, but he's going to clap <laughs> on that one. There's no question about where his loyalties lie now. I don't think. I think that was a tough possession for Minnesota. You don't really need to force it in that situation. You need to make sure that you get a quality shot. If you're Northwestern, you want to be patient and still get a high percentage shot. Force this defense to work, look to attack. You don't have to settle. And they're working it around. That's who they want to have it. Nia Coffey turning the corner and finishing with the right hand. That was good offense. Good offense. Great job of finding Coffey on the backside, and she was under control and poised in that finish. Another 20-point game for Nia Coffey. Good look. Bounce pass down to Barnes for two. I like that attack by, by Minnesota as well. Coffey on the other end. So good when she can get the ball in that short corner. And Northwestern, a great job of getting her a touch. She took what the defense gave her, finished it on the right side. But what I liked about what Minnesota did that time is be, just because you're a good three-point shooting team doesn't mean that you have to live and die by the three. I like that attack. I like that quick score. Now they got to come back and get a stop on the defensive end. Hey, coming up next, our basketball experts cover the major topics in college hoops and examine how the events of the week in the Big Ten impact the national picture. It's Big Ten basketball and beyond coming up after this one on BTN. Big day of women's hoops, Indiana beating Nebraska.
earlier today. We talked about Nebraska, Purdue, and Minnesota coming into this afternoon with seven and four conference records, trying to get one of those coveted top four spots for the conference tournament. Oh, and Indiana now right with them at, at seven and five. You, you, what Terry Moore has done, and Indiana, the way that they've been in attack mode on the offensive end, and really fighting and clawing and scratching to, to grind out wins. Middle of the pack is tough to figure out this year in conference play. Lydia Rohde can't get it to fall. A minute and a half to go. Minnesota down four. You think hard and who's probably going to get the opportunity here on this possession? Well, I think certainly you think about Rachel Bantam and Carly Wagner. Wagner's been a little bit quiet in the second half. And I like the play that Minnesota runs where they have Bantam attacking and Wagner coming off of the screen. Well, they're just going to let Bantam ISO one-on-one -on -one up top. Why not? Rachel Bantam has now tied a career high of 39. You don't need a quick shot there. You, you really have to work the ball and get a good shot. If, if Northwestern's going to continue to shade Bantam to the left, somebody's got to be there to help. Oh, she tried to go behind the back and lost it. Inman with the big takeaway. Deary left all alone for the big layup of two. Tough to go behind your back in traffic. 19 now for Ashley Deary. The lead back up to four. Bantam wants to take her. Bantam! If she made that, she would have had an opportunity to tie this game. Northwestern had an opportunity to switch that high pick and roll, and Deary does a good job of getting out. Bantam tries to go behind the back and turns it over, and Northwestern's able to convert, and Deary wanted to be there to contest, no question about it. Bantam draws the foul. It's, you're, you're sort of in a little bit of a catch-22 right there as a defender because you know you got to be tight enough that she can't let it fly. Bantam savvy enough to draw the foul. She continues to build on a new career high. 41. Previous career high was 39. She got that a couple of times. You saw another 41-point game a couple of days ago. I guess it feels like a couple of days ago. Sh wasn't Tori really. Walker Kimbrough got it last Tuesday against Purdue. Bantam now 9 of 10 from the free throw line. 42 points, 5 boards, 4 assists. She's doing it on 13 of 21 shooting. She's got 7 three-point makes, and she's got Minnesota back in this one. I wouldn't be surprised if Minnesota comes back out checking man-to-man. -man. If, if they find man-to-man, -man, they got a small lineup out on the floor. You can probably switch every screen, not allow anybody an opportunity to get lost off the ball if they come out in the zone. And if, if you're Northwestern, you certainly want to think, I'm going to attack. Uh, I'm going to attack. Each team is in the penalty. I want to find a way to get to the rim. And you see a flashback of the last matchup. Rachel Bannon was going off in that ball game as well. 187 combined points were scored. 32 Bannon had against Northwestern in that game. She made six three-point makes, so she's got 74 points against Northwestern this year. No, Minnesota gonna stay in the zone. Really important when you're in the zone in this time and score situation is don't get caught watching the ball. About a 15 second differential. Oh, it went off the forehead of Mia Coffey. A crucial turnover for Northwestern, and Minnesota now with a chance to take the lead. I don't like when you have the ball on the, on the sideline like that, because you really don't give yourself an opportunity to use the whole floor. This is going to be fun. Rachel Banna, the ball in her hands. Good extra pass. They work it around to Shane Mullaney. Wagner with the offensive board. And they got Deary from behind. Stops the clock with 10.6 left. I'm not sure why you'd foul right there. Sure, sure, Minnesota gets another possession, but that's just not a smart foul. Northwestern has another timeout that they can use to advance the ball. Up the floor, you have to make sure that your players are aware, make or miss, to call the timeout. But I, that's not a smart play by Ashley Deary. Wagner with a big miss. She's a 79% free throw shooter. And Ashley Deary's breathing a sigh of relief right now. That's four, by the way, on Deary. 
We're tied at 80. The ninth tie today. Once this game is complete, our basketball expert's going to break everything down. Big Ten basketball and beyond coming up after this one. We have 10 seconds left to play, and Northwestern's going to get it. Well, I think if you're Northwestern, you want the last shot. Absolutely no question about it. I like them having the ball in the middle of the floor to be able to create on either side. If Deary can drive in a drive and kick situation or drive and dump situation in a high pick and roll, I think Northwestern can get a good shot. 80 to 80. You said you thought Minnesota would come out in a man-to-man -man the last possession. Do you expect them to stay in the zone on this possession? No, well, that's their comfort zone, to stay in the zone. I certainly, you know, would think about hey, if you're going to come out of the zone, you know you're going to attempt to force them to take a long shot. But I, I, I personally feel much more comfortable in a man-to-man -man scenario on the defensive end of the floor. But Minnesota's a team that has played zone that is very comfortable in their zone. And this kind of possession, you want to be the team with the basketball. No pressure. You miss a shot. In the worst case scenario, you go to overtime. Yeah, you, but you want to make sure you get the last shot if you're Northwestern. You want to make sure that no matter what, you are attacking the rim. You're in the penalty. If you can get a layup, if you can get to the foul line, or if you can get a drive and kick for an open shot, there's no reason to settle for a no pass contested shot. There has been a second timeout now called. So Northwestern now without any timeouts, and Minnesota still with one left. In case you're just joining us, Rachel Bantam has had one of those Rachel Bantam days, but today it was a career day. 42 points she's put up. Well, she's been terrific. I mean, not, not only with the ball in her hands, but with the ball out of her hands as well. And she's in the top 10 in the league in a number of categories, but we're seeing her score in a much more balanced way this season. Her ability to read defenders and understand when to shoot the jump shot in the three and when to attack off the rim. I think her pace is a little bit different than it has been in the past because of her ability to sit around, sit last year and watch and learn. Well, they're going to stay in the zone. Northwestern with the final chance. Here's Inman, the 15-footer. That's too strong. Kunayak Pana gets it back for Inman for three in the win. We're headed to overtime. A couple of good looks from Northwestern and Kristen Inman. And the Cats just couldn't put it away. Yeah, I think you used Nia Coffey in that pick and roll, and so she demands attention from the defense as well. Inman gets a look right here, an open look. Great job, not able to knock it down, but Kunai Yakpana, who else on the offensive glass, giving her a second look. And that rebound by Kunai Yakpana ties a career high with 16 boards. Now you head into an overtime with Northwestern with a number of players with four fouls, certainly foul issues. You look at Ashley Deary, Kristen Inman, Nia Coffey, and Kunai Akpana, and Minnesota happen to feel very good about where they are right now and coming out aggressive mindset on the offensive end of the floor. By the way, half of those 16 boards have been offensive boards wow. for Kunai Akpana. But yeah, Northwestern with four players with four fouls. Edwards from Minnesota has already fouled out. Hedstrom has four. But really, the key players right now for Minnesota, they're in good shape. It wouldn't surprise me for Minnesota to find a way to get Carly Wagner a, a touch early. Very quiet in the second half of this ball game, and she was so good in the first half at attacking off the bounce. If she wasn't getting scores for herself, she was dropping it off to her bigs and they're in the paint. Minnesota 0 for 1 in terms of overtime games. They lost to Auburn 81 to 79 this year. And Northwestern, this is its first overtime game this season. So here we go. Five minutes to go. Tied 80-80 between the Gophers and the Wildcats.
Coffee gets a touch. Coffee pulls up too strong. It's Deary up against Bantam again. And the switch, Coffee's now on it. Bantam likes that matchup, and with the take and the foul. I love the recognition by Rachel Bantam. She sees the switch, she attacks Mia Coffee, and she finishes with the contact. Watch this, she's poised, she reads it, she doesn't get rushed. She says, hey, I have a deadly three-point shooter. They're gonna come out when I retreat, dribble, and then attacks at just the right time. And Kunai Akpana, Northwestern's top rebounder, is now done. She's got five. Coffee, Inman, and Deary sitting with four. Anna, 10 of 11 from the free throw line. She's got 45. One of the things Joe McEwen mentioned was he said, you know, we, we can't let them play above their averages. We got to have everybody score at their averages. Well, Bantam's working on doubling her average. Nia Coffee with the response. Go to your star. Coffee's got 22. And Wagner loses it. Northwestern now with a chance to take the lead. Nice look. Deary's left all alone, so she's going to take it and drills it. What a big shot for Ashley Deary at Northwestern. And again, the ball gets to the high post. It gets to the backside on the block and then out for the three. When you can get the ball in the paint or two feet in the paint and then kick for a three, that's a good look. And there's Deary. Wagner going to work. Wagner with the answer. Wagner had five points in the second half up until that point. She's got 12, 17 for the game. She had 10 at the half. Lydia Rohde, back-to-back -back threes for the Wildcats. Bantam lost it. Minnesota will keep it. Deary's got to be careful right there. Ball goes inside, it goes outside, and Deary knocks down a three. Good ball movement and execution by Northwestern. Here's Bantam from the wing. Remember when we said we don't see Rachel Bantam miss badly very often? She was too open. It still wasn't badly. It was still right on target. It was on target, just a little bit short. Lyon will take it. That's not a good shot. Coffee will get it back. Coffee with a little cleanup job. Right now, if you're Northwestern, you have to think about how you're getting your shots in offense. A quick shot isn't always the best shot. You have to force the defense to work. You have to use some time off the clock. Last off of Nia Coffee. The clock is your friend. The clock is your friend. Utilize it. Wear them down. It's off the mark, and Inman does a good job of keeping the ball alive, and Coffee gets the two. 19 offensive rebounds for the Cats. Bantam steps back. Bantam. Buckets for Bantam in this second half. And down the stretch. The star is shining brightly today. She wanted to have that three ball that she missed back. She can't get it back, but she can create space and knock down contested twos. She just watch. She, she just sees and she uses that dribble. It's, it's, it's not a step back like you typically see where you really push off of that inside foot. It's a step back utilizing that dribble to create space. She's working on a 50-pointer, doubling her season average. You said it. 24 is a great average to have, but she's put up 47, seven three-point makes, 15 of 25 shooting. Well, Minnesota certainly needed it. They haven't gotten a, lo a lot of production from anybody besides Bantam. Wagner has 17, but quiet in the second half. 
Northwestern needs a good quality offensive possession here. Coffee on the baseline. Coffee gets it right back. The 20th offensive board for Northwestern. She had a couple looks at it. The kick out to Headstrong. And another offensive rebound for Minnesota. Bantam left open. Bantam fires. Headstrom again to Wagner on the baseline. Minnesota going to work on the offensive glass. Great effort. This is like their fourth chance. Deary on Bantam. 1.13 left. Iso, she's going one on one right here. Northwestern might need to think about bringing somebody else. Bantam can feel it. Bantam with a step back. That's a three in and out. And Rachel Bantam's going to send Kristen Inman to the line and stop the clock with 58 that seconds. That was nearly all the way down, Lisa. It was down, and then it came out. You got one-on-one -on -one right here. Deary does a good job of staying in front, but look at how Bantam's able to create space. Ugh, wow, that was down. You talked about her step back move. I'm impressed all day long. We've seen her do it a couple of times where she steps back and knows exactly where that three point line is. Yeah, when, when, you're, when you're a shooter like Rachel Bantam is, you just have a knack and an understanding and an intuition about where you are on the floor and where you are in regards to that three point line. Coffee. Oh, big. And another chance for Northwestern. Bantam tries to tie her up. Minnesota's going to get it. That's huge. A heads up play by Rachel Bantam. Mm. Good job by Bantam, able to tie it up. But that's one of those things, if you're Minnesota, you got to be able to get that rebound. Inside cut. Shane Mullaney got bumped a little. Can't put it away. And Minnesota again stops the clock. Now, this is a Northwestern team. Shoots 67% for the season. That is the second worst percentage, free throw percentage, in the conference. They got to make it here down the stretch, and Lyon does exactly that. Good on a couple. Gopher's got to hustle. Bantam, a deep three. Man, oh man! Rachel Banna has put up 50 in Evanston. Too much space right there for Banna. Too much time, too much space. You're, you're gonna see, you can see Deary just kind of backing up. Rachel Banna can see that a mile away. And she's gonna pull it and she's gonna nail it. It's, it's interesting timing, and I think one of the things that, that we'll start to see as, as women's basketball has implemented the, the being able to call a timeout to advance the ball, coaches, as far as a comfort zone, like to call that defensive timeout to set their defense. And right now, if, if that's Minnesota's last timeout, if they get a foul opportunity, Marlene Stellings has to be talking to her team about not only what we do on the defensive end of foul, but now what we're coming back with on the offensive end as well. Marlene Stallings is without a timeout left. Northwestern still has one to go. But the Cats have to go the full 94. Up a bucket. Five second differential. Shot and game clock. And see if you play good defense in that five seconds, you can call timeout at the end and advance the ball. Coffee. In and out, Bantam with the board. Minnesota can tie or take the lead. Bantam's got it. She's going to take Lyon on. Rachel Bantam on the it. left side. She ties it. it at 92. That is a great decision by Bantam. She didn't have to settle for the three. She read it. She timed it. She took her time. She didn't get rushed. Look, she sees the defender on her. 
She sees what happens in the two-man game, and she attacks and gets the easy score. That's a great read. That's great poise and understanding of the time and score situation. 11 ties. And we are 2.4 away from perhaps a second overtime. Rachel Bannum has been lights out. 52 points in this game. We have seen some special Rachel Bannum performances. This is at the top of the list. Time now for the Coyote Logistics. No excuses impact player regardless if Minnesota loses or wins this game. She has been fantastic today. She absolutely has and has really put this team on her back on the offensive end of the floor. Right now you've got 2.4. It looks like Minnesota's gonna stay in this zone. Certainly want to be aware of where a shooter is. Get it back to her. Yeah. Gives it right back to Lyon for the win. In and out. We're going to a second OT. Wow. Way too much space for Maggie Lyon, but Minnesota dodges one right there. Right off of the inbound play, if you're going to play a zone, you certainly have to be aware of where the inbounder is, and Maggie Lyon off the mark. Can't get it to fall. But you know what? Joe McEwen called that timeout to get Northwestern in that position on the sideline. They advanced the ball, and they got Maggie Lyon that opportunity there, what you were talking about. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that that's something that the coaches are still getting used to, understanding, you know, on, on a missed shot or a made shot. On the defensive end of the floor, you call that timeout, you advance the ball. Now with 2.4 seconds, they were able to get a quality shot. And really, at the end of the day, that's all you can ask. Give yourself an opportunity. And both of these teams have been able to give themselves opportunities in different ways. This game, every game is important for these two, for any team that plays. But Minnesota coming into today was in a three-way tie with Nebraska-Purdue with a 7-4 and four record. Now, Nebraska lost one to Indiana today. So there is, there is a race there for the top four teams. Remember, the top four get the double bye in the conference tournament in March. And Northwestern trying to avoid being one of the bottom four teams. That means you got to play on Wednesday of the conference tournament. Both of these teams met the, met, made the NCAA tournament last year. Both of them trying to pick up some momentum here in February and March to get the, back there in back-to-back -back years. We are tied at 92. The first time these two teams met, they put up 187 combined points. I didn't know if we would get there, but we're <laughs> going to get there. Now it's going to take two overtimes to get there. Well, and, and both of these teams have short benches, so fatigue may be a factor. So very important for, for offensive discipline, getting the best shot on the floor to give yourself an opportunity to get high percentage looks and to do the little things. Kunai Akpana for Northwestern already fouled out, so you take away a rebounder on the floor for, for Northwestern. And for Minnesota, can they continue to find a way not only to get Bantam shots, but then to get Wagner some as well, because she can take some pressure off of Bantam. That's a great tip. Right off of the tip, it's headstrong. It's a heads-up play by Minnesota. And the Gophers take the two-point advantage. They put that Super Bowl watch party on hold. We've got a super matchup here in Evanston, a second overtime battle between Minnesota and Northwestern, and Nia Coffey with the take draws the personal. Important to update you on the foul situations, too. Coffey's got four. Kunayak Pana for Northwestern's already fouled out. Inman with four. Deary with four. Rachel Bannum just picked up her third. Hedstrom has four for Minnesota. Edwards has fouled out for the Gophers. A 64% foul shooter, Nia Coffey is. Yeah, that's an area that Nia Coffey's really got to work because of her mobility and because of the way she can get to the rim really with ease. She's got to be able to be more efficient from the foul line. One point advantage. And the foul on the penetration on Lydia Rohde. That is number two. Lydia Rohde has gotten some decent playing time here today. Put up 10 points. One of her best games, since I mentioned, since that Penn State game early in the conference season. Sam Mulaney makes good. Defense! 
Lead up to three for the Gophers. The turnaround for Lyon, that's a shot. It's been her shot all afternoon. Good job by Northwestern. That flash from the low block to the high post. Lyon able to get an easy two. Now they got to get a defensive stop. That's a tough place to be right there in the corner. 23 points for Lyon, although she's been 0 for 8 from 3. All of her points have come from the two-point range or the free throw range and the turnaround. She continues to impress. Rachel Banna. 54. And she says, you're going to take away my step back. You're going to take away my drive. OK, I'm just going to spin right around you. A new Big Ten record. Never been done before. And think of all the great scorers in conference history. <laughs> Wagner with the rebound. And she tumbles to the ground and gets fouled. Watch Rachel Bannum right here. She looks for the step back. It's not there. Rhodey cuts her off. You got a spin move. Uh, I don't, you're not going to check Rachel Bannum one on one. There's no way. A secondary defender has got to be prepared to come up on Rachel Bannum in that situation. You force her to make a counter move. Somebody else has to be there in rotation. That's just a great read. Really good poise and patience. Ashley Deary has fouled out for Northwestern. Jordan Hankins, the freshman, is now in. We'll have to play the point guard for the Cats. Kunai Akpana is out. Deary is out. Here's Hankins now running it. Inman, Coffee, and Lyon, the leaders out there right now for Northwestern. They get it into the hands of Coffee. Coffee draws a foul. That's a big bucket. Stops the clock. She'll get a chance at the free throw line. Minnesota forced Northwestern to play around the perimeter for a majority of that possession. But again, when Coffee gets it in the short corner, she is so good at attacking the rim. And she's put up 28, by the way. One of five double-figure scorers for Northwestern. Three minutes to go here in this second OT. Rachel Banham working on 54. Jordan Hankins off the bench, in and out. Bantam to Headstrong. And Lyon got her. Transition defense, Jordan Hankins takes the shot from below the hash mark. Somebody has to get back in transition defense. It's a two-point Minnesota lead. A hundred and one. Oh, Nia Coffey calling for the ball inside. She's got the mismatch. They weren't able to get it to her. Line with a couple dribble pull up. Cuts the lead to one. Maggie Lyon's been living in the mid-range. I like the fact that they're finding a way to get her the ball in that position. And I'm out to Headstrom. Here's Mulaney. Mulaney with the take. Mulaney with the finish, the scoop finish. The first time Northwestern has hit the century mark this year. The third time for Minnesota. They're sitting at 103. 
there, no rush. Banna drawing the foul. And you got two right there. They should just go ahead and trap Bantam. You got Hankins on her, you got Inman on her. Go ahead and force her to get rid of the basketball. Shane Mullaney, we talked about how impactful she's been since she has been coming off the bench. And a great take right there by the senior who certainly understands time and score situations. 11 of 12 from the free throw line. Rachel Bantam now with 55 points. Western's got to get a stop right here. Defend without fouling. And if you're Minnesota, you want to be the aggressor. They've been able to make a living from the foul line. And Bantam does just that. And one has busted open this Big Ten record and this game. So good at using her body. So good at protecting the ball. Watch Hankins. She gets in on her. Bantam uses her body to create the contact and keeps it high enough and out of reach is able to finish. You know when you're injured, you, you really can work a lot of strengthening your upper body, and you can certainly see that in the way the Bantam's been able to play and been able to finish a lot of plays. I'm interested in the fact that you said you felt like her release point mm -hmm. was better and different. She's got 58 points today. We mentioned about her doubling her average. How about her tripling her average, Steph White? Well, she's certainly working on it, no question about it. Maggie Lyon gets an opportunity from the foul line, put some points on the board with no time running off the clock. Joe McEwen needs to talk to his team about their defensive execution right now. Still plenty of time, 44 seconds to play. A four-point gopher advantage. It's four points. I, I'm surprised that Northwestern's not fouling to try to extend this. They got to be careful. Game. They have people with four fouls, and there is one of them. And, and I don't know so why you, done. Why you wouldn't foul earlier. I mean, you, it's it's a four-point ball game. It's a two-possession ball game, and you let them use almost half the shot clock. Coffee should not have been an option. Inman should not have been an option. Both of those players had four. Well, you almost don't really have a choice when you're at this point in the game. I think if they would have used it in the backcourt with Hankins or Rhodey and foul somebody other than Rachel Panham, if it's automatically a two-possession game, you need to extend it. She's fouled out with 28. In fact, three Northwestern players have put up 20 points, and here's the reaction. She knows she's done. A 28-point night for Coffee, a 28-point day for Lyon as well, but that has been overshadowed by the 58 from Rachel Banna. I think anything else that happens in the day in Big Ten Women's <laughs> Basketball is going to be overshadowed by the 58 by Rachel Banna. I wonder if we'll see 58 in the Super Bowl tonight, Steph White. I'm talking combined. <laughs> Inman's now done. A special afternoon, a super Sunday kind of afternoon for Rachel Bannon. 58 points today. And you see her numbers, eight three-point makes, 19 of 32 shooting. And what I like most is, is her decision making. You know, her understanding when to attack, when to pull up, when to shoot that three. Her poise under pressure, hitting big shots in big moments. She's put up 90 against Northwestern in two games this year. And Wagner's just salting this one away. Well, thank you, Rachel Bannon, for deciding to come back. <laughs> she is providing some really special moments here this afternoon. Well, we've seen so many special moments throughout her career, but this one, just the icing on the cake. Lion, the only 
Northwestern score, the only one of the top four scores that's left in this game. She's got 31. That ties her career high. We thought we might see some scoring. We got some scoring. We got a lot of scoring, Lisa. Two teams, two of the higher scoring teams in the league, no question. And Rachel Bannum has been special. Sixty. Six zero for Rachel Banna. Unbelievable. It took two overtimes to do it, but boy, it was fun to watch. A record breaking afternoon for one of Big Ten's biggest stars on this Super Sunday. It's never been done before. 60 points in a Big Ten game. Rachel Banham is special. And she gave us a special performance this afternoon. How about that reaction? 60 of Minnesota's 112. And the Gophers sweep Northwestern in the season series. There was 187 combined points in the first meeting. There was a lot more in the second meeting. Rachel Banna had 20 at the half. We thought that was good. She put up 40 in the second. And more importantly, when Minnesota was down nine, she took over and put the Gophers on her shoulders and went to work. Rachel Banham's final stats, she put up 90 in two games against Northwestern. 60 today, 32 in that January game earlier this year. She got eight three-point makes, 19 of 32 shooting, awfully efficient. Rachel Banham, a super performance on Super Sunday, and she is standing by with Steph White. Rachel, a special performance. Can you just tell us what was going through your mind today? Just to take over. Um, Mama mentality, that's what I like to think, and it was crazy. Um, my teammates set me up so well, and I was just feeling really good, and I'm so happy we got that win. You guys were down nine, and it seemed like you had the ball in your hands and made every right decision. What was it about that moment that you loved? Just knowing that I had to take over. You know, we couldn't get, we really needed this win, and we wanted it so much. We've been working so hard, and I just knew I needed to take over the game. You talked about this being such an important win, really an important game for, for both teams. What allowed your team to gut it out at crunch time? We all fought for it. Uh, we all played to our roles, and, you know, we secured the ball. We got fouled. We made late. We made our free throws on the stretch. That was huge. And, you know, we just played really well together. It was one thing that we are talking about on air. You know, we thanked you for coming back for moments like this. Um, how special has this, this season been for you? It's been amazing. I'm so blessed, and it's been great. I'm, I'm so lucky that I I'm recovered so well, and my team has been so supportive, and the fans and everybody out there. So I'm very lucky. All right. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank Appreciate you. it. Back to you, Lisa. Steph, thank you. Some teams average 60. Bantam puts up 60. A double overtime thriller. 112 to 106, Minnesota victorious. That's going to do it from Evanston. For Steph White, our entire BTN crew rooking a little overtime. I'm Lisa Bynton. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Big Ten Network. Thank you.
Thank you.